ジタルパワーが生み出すネットワークネットワーク一等賢い沖のビジネス法Last video, we left off with McAfee's decision to move to Belize. Like I said in that video, it was most likely in order to escape his legal troubles. Before arriving in Belize, he bought a beachfront property on a m b e r g u i s Key. After a couple of years, he had already established a number of businesses in the country. But his most ambitious project was called Quorum X. Quorum X began after he met a 31 year old ethno. So this is the this is the shady shit. Didn't he、uh, sexually assault her? Right? That wasn't that. Botanist named Allison Adonisio. They struck up a conversation. Am I misremembering? She told him about her doctorate research into anti quorum sensing. Quorum sensing is a process used by infectious bacteria to communicate through pheromone signals in order to synchronize a pathogenic attack. However, with plants that possess anti quorum sensing compounds, it's possible to block communication between bacteria, thus preventing an infection. Plants with anti quorum sensing Compounds could likely be found spread along the shores of the new river and were said to have been used by Belizean medicine men for generations. McAfee was sold. He offered to bankroll her research with the intention of eventually using her findings to develop a commercial product. She happily accepted. Prior to this, in February of 2010, he purchased 100 acres of marshland about 10 miles upriver from Lamini. Over the next several months, he spent millions filling in the land and building several thatched roof bungalows. This is where he set up Quorum X's lab. He also built a main house for himself and invited Adonisio to stay in it. Bro, people. People, you know, see this in video games. Like, he, he unironically lived life like a fucking video game character, dude. I mean, this is like straight up fucking Far Cry villain shit. McAfee, a man who always travels with an entourage, also brought along his posse, which included his longtime girlfriend, Jennifer Irwin. But soon, q u o r u m X went south. Something changed in McAfee's personality once he settled in Belize's jungle. Prior to that, he presented himself as a clean cut, freewheeling adventurer. Then he suddenly rebranded himself into a Colonel Kurtz esque figure who surrounded himself with a retinue of prostitutes and local gangsters. I emailed John McAfee himself to find out more, but he brushed me off. So instead, I emailed Jeff Wise, a journalist who has covered John McAfee for over a dozen years. And I kept on, you know, he thinks I'm obsessed with him. <laughs> he, thinks, he thinks I'm like, he's my white whale. He described me as his arch enemy, I think, at one point.、When、I first met him, he, was,、um, he had started promoting this kind of dangerous, low level ultralight flying. After he moved down to Belize, He、um, got into the bath salts. So he was getting into drugs and he quickly alienated people. MDPV. On December 12th, 2010, at 11. Beware of the whale fucking photo of him. That's the same、uh, video that Will watched months ago. Where is the whale fucking photo? My man. Whale fucking photo, dude. Play the video. No, I'm not gonna fucking keep playing the video if there is like. At 4 7 p.m., he started a thread on a popular drug forum called bluelight.ru under the pseudonym Stuffmonger. There he evangelized about NDPV's hypersexuality inducing effects, calling it super perv powder. He said it made him so horny that, quote, a hundred milligram dose will merely guarantee fatigue and sore genitals from the nonstop sex and keep you up for 24 hours. He also wrote that he liked to put the stuff up his butt. Quote, Measure your dose, apply a small amount of saliva just to the tip of your middle finger, press it against the dose, insert. You will be well rewarded. Yes. I've taken bath salts, every fucking one of them. Things like MDPV. Fuck yes, I took them on the goddamn psycho knot. I have had a number of acquaintances, both male and female, who have rubbed their genitals way past the point of bleeding and still couldn't stop. A user on a large dose, if alone and presented with food, will figure out a way to fuck it or shove it up the rectum. This is not a joke. Everything on the tan becomes a sex partner or sex aid. I will not, anymore, let anyone on TAN be alone with my dogs. Twice in the past year, TAN users, one man, one woman, both after major doses to be fair, 
Attempted to have sex with one of my dogs. Okay, that's enough of that. Just, um, check the thread out if you want to. It's- it honestly is such a fun read. By the way, when he says tan, he's referring to the tan variant of MDPV, as opposed to the white version. Anyway, he also wrote that he was manufacturing MDPV himself. Specifically, that he was attempting to extract tan MDPV from white hydrochloride. He took pictures of the process and shared it onto the site. He wrote that his experiments resulted in a number of side effects, especially paranoia. Quote, I am my only test subject. I temporarily blinded myself for three hours. I had visual and auditory hallucinations and the worst paranoia of my life. I did not sleep for four days. So what I'm getting at is MDPV made McAfee two things, wildly paranoid and insatiably horny. Therefore, after building a compound in the middle of the jungle, he started to surround himself with prostitutes and local gangsters. And this is no joke. The dude had a harem of women living with him. Now this sounds like every man's fantasy, but in reality, it's, uh, it's messy. He wrote on his blog that discord was common, and said that each woman tried to kill him more than once. For example, Betsy, a young woman he met after one of his dogs ate her chicken, threatened to slash his throat many times. Another girl, who he called Amber One, since there were two Ambers, pulled a knife on Betsy and, quote, alternated between love and hate for Tiffany. Another girl named Marley burst into his room with a gun while he was sleeping with Anna and had slapped Jane's face more times than he could count. Yeah, they would try to fight one another too. The youngest they, I girl think one of the, uh, one of the main, one of the main ladies tried to murder another one of the ladies. A 17 year old named Amy Emschwiller. She tried to shoot him while he was asleep, but missed, resulting in her bursting his eardrum. Still, he spent most of his time having a whole lot of sex. His sex had to last long. I mean, you can't give him one or two hours. He wants like morning to day. I mean, like you have to be in that bed from morning till the next day. And if you can continue till seven days. I don't know why I said this dude was crazy. Yeah, no, totally normal libertarian behavior, by the way. Least pedophilic libertarian, yeah. That's sex for him. And he needed to because of the MDPV. And I guess the stuff also made certain fetishes more appealing. Because he, he wanted to have, like... Oh, this is from that documentary that I was talking about. That's sex. He used to make you shit in his mouth. So what about the paranoia? Okay, how are you going to just skip that? Okay, this is crazy. He's just, like, jumping on... He's just, like... He literally just skipped one of the most important parts of John McAfee's life and sexual behavior. John McAfee want, would hire prostitutes who then he would subsequently date uh, for extended periods of time. And he had what is known as a shit hammock. So what he would do is he would let ladies that you just saw lay on top of this hammock that he had that had a hole in the middle of it which these ladies would lay on and then shit through and he would stand underneath that hole with his mouth open yeah how the fuck do you figure out you have that uh, uh, fetish libertarian the inducing effects of mdpv well amy m schweiler convinced him that the nearby town of carmelita was full of gang members bent on robbing and killing him she also told him that it was a hub of crime and narco trafficking so he decided to clean it up there was no police station so he built one he put members of the local police force onto his payroll and had them patrol carmelita they collected information for him and made arrests based off of his orders he also took the law into his own hands one time, he pulled over a vehicle himself, only to uncover a car full of seniors and children. The village leaders were perplexed. They told Joshua Davis, quote, He just showed up and started telling us what to do. I thought he would come by, introduce himself, and explain what he was doing here. But he never did. They wondered how and why McAfee came to the conclusion that Carmelita was, as he insisted, the most corrupt village on the planet. He you guys understand what I mean when I say this is literally like a libertarian uh, uh, dream, right? Like, having your own micro-colonial project is like, I can't even think of a, a, a more libertarian thing to do than just like, straight up just overtaking a small village.
uh, in a developed nation, developing nation, or like a fucking colony or, or whatever, uh, wherever he was at this point. It's like, it is literally just like, it's the, it is Ancapistan. He, he built his own private colonial force. He said he didn't talk to any of the village leaders because M. Schwiller had told him that they were all criminals. He added that she secretly recorded them, thinking up a way to kill him with a grenade. Even though he said that, at the same time he was adding local gangsters into his inner circle. He claimed that there were 11 attempts on his life during the previous year, so he decided to hire protection. But in the process, McAfee became something akin to a gang leader. Former members of his inner circle told press that McAfee was trying to take over Carmelita and even the Belize government. Soon, he had created a network of gangsters and cops that were on his payroll. His head of security was a former corrupt cop who was caught trying to sell police weapons to drug dealers. He also hired a man named Austin Tino Allen, who had been put away a total of 28 times. McAfee dressed his guards in military fatigues and had them patrol Carmelita on the back of trucks. He also set an 8 o'clock curfew and told the villagers that if they break it, he would kill them. For me, it's like, I've been, I've like, I, this guy's dangerous. Now, even before he wanted, he started killing people, I thought this is a guy who's wreaking havoc on people's lives. After an elaborate game of cat and mouse, he squashed beef with a notorious Belizean gangster named Eddie Mac-10 McCoy and hired him. During the process of making this video, someone claiming to be Eddie Mac-10 McCoy contacted me on Instagram. At first I thought it was a troll, but then I noticed that the pictures on his page were photographs that weren't available anywhere online, and that piqued my interest. After he emailed me more photos, I started to believe that it was actually him. Once I confirmed it, I agreed to talk to him on Skype the following morning. That interview is also from that documentary I was talking about. What? Fuck, what is the name of that documentary? Is it Gringo? Okay, uh, why don't we uh, go back and let's start with my first question. How did you meet John McAfee? Well, I met him. You remember how well, it was a lie. Well, it's a long story, you know. So it doesn't have anything to do with uh, David Middleton. Well, it had to. It had something to do with that, yes. McAfee had allegedly paid some local hitmen to beat and publicly execute a man named David Middleton after he had robbed one of McAfee's properties. They beat him in the bush and attacked him with knives and tasers. Then they ran over his head with a truck in front of a crowd in Carmelita. After slipping into a coma, he died in hospital later that night. Middleton told police that he had been abducted, beaten, and stabbed by two men who came to- At this point, it's like the second uh, uh, kill that he has under his belt that we know of. If you are to consider the, the, uh, the paragliding uh, incident or whatever that little like baby plane is called uh, to be another death under his belt. ...to his house in Orange Walk. He says he did not know either of the men who drove a white pickup truck. He died on Friday at the KHMH, and it is now a murder investigation. Since Mac-10 and Middleton were friends, McAfee assumed Mac-10 wanted revenge. Meanwhile, Mac-10 heard McAfee was out to get him, so he went into hiding. McAfee had his men looking for Mac-10 until he got a hold of him on the phone, and they agreed to meet. Mac-10 showed up with an AK-47, uncharacteristically, while McAfee's guards were all <laughs> armed with shotguns. <laughs> uncharacteristically. Their 12-gauge shotguns were no match for the firepower of MAC-10's AK, so McAfee decided to relocate the meeting to a San Pedro cafe, and that's where they settled their differences. When George Lavelle, the country's Minister of National Security, caught wind of what McAfee was up to, he spearheaded an investigation. He couldn't figure out what McAfee would be doing associating with notorious criminals like MAC-10 unless he was involved in the drug trade himself. When McAfee met MAC-10 at the cafe, he arrived guarded by a member of the police force, as well as two known gang members. To Marco Vidal, head of the gang suppression unit, it seemed like, quote, McAfee's intention was to make it categorically clear to Mac-10 that he controlled both legitimate and illegitimate armed forces. Then the authorities received information that McAfee might be distributing and manufacturing meth, and it made sense. As New York Times reporter David Segal put it, a rich guy in the middle of the jungle with a lab surrounded by a lot of men with weapons and links to area bad guys. It looked highly suspicious to the gang suppression unit. Plus, there were all those blue light posts of McAfee basically incriminating himself. So they raided his compound. The search uncovered weapons scattered throughout the property. What they found was seven 12 gauge pump action shotguns, two nine millimeter pistols, and five air rifles. They also found $19,650 in cash stashed away in McAfee's bedroom. So 
this is the most important part of the story is that John McAfee hyped himself up as this like John McAfee hyped himself up as this like dangerous criminal in a it's just routinely consistently but like the drugs that he was trying to develop were not real and did not fucking work like and he himself was like you know i mean he he operated this way in belize like where the dollar goes a very long way you know what i mean like, like he was like a budget fucking he was a budget gangster like he wasn't really a a uh you know serious gangster i guess and bricks of an unknown substance which McAfee seemed to be manufacturing. The stuff tested similarly to methamphetamine, but it was not an illegal substance. However, it was most likely MDPV. McAfee spent most of the night in jail until the U.S. Embassy intervened and he was let go. The last day of April of this year, uh, I woke up at 6 in the morning to 42 armed soldiers in full riot gear carrying automatic weapons storming my property in Orange Walk on the river. Um, I was held in handcuffs behind my back in the sun for 14 hours without, without food or water. Uh, at one point, by the way, I asked a guard for food and water, not just for me, but for everyone else. The guard's response was, do I look like a chef to you? Now, indeed, he did not look like a chef, so it was my mistake, but uh, it was not a pleasant day. From that moment on, I've had nothing but problems with the Belizean government. McAfee said publicly that he believed that the GSU raid was a direct result of refusing to donate $2 million to an Orange Walk politician's campaign. Then he said it was because of his refusal to assist the Prime Minister's son, Shine, who's a rapper by the way, to gain an early release from an American prison in 2009. The GSU put out the following statement. The GSU makes no apology for deeming a person in control of a laboratory with no approval for manufacturing any substance, having gang connections and heavily armed security guards, as a person of interest. In late May of 2012, McAfee wrote that he was on the run from the GSU onto a private message board. He wrote, I am hiding in an undisclosed location. I have 21% charge remaining. The GSU have issued additional charges. My lawyers tell me there is absolutely nothing to worry the buzzing is in the background. I'm not buzzing. It's in the background. God damn, dude. Zoomers have like the most fragile fucking hearing. They get so annoying when they hear anything that's like a little. When they hear anything that's like a little out of the norm, they're like, dude, this is literally the biggest inconvenience I've ever seen or heard in my entire life. Not as big as an inconvenience as running a top of the hour ad, though. However, top of the hour, every hour, there's a six second ad break. All but, but. Having said that, there is a way to avoid said ads. You can't avoid the buzzing in the video, so shut the fuck up. But you can avoid the ad break at the top of the hour. How can you do that? Well, by subscribing with either an Amazon Prime account or a... Uh, sorry, with an Amazon Prime, uh, you can subscribe for free. Or with a $5 subscription, you can subscribe for $5. Or you can use an ad blocker or VPN. Here's the ad break now. Let's go. Bryce got more respected with all these noises. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, I'll talk about that later. But yeah, Rice Gumman and I are setting up a basketball uh, uh, situation right now. Yeah. Worry about. So that makes me very worried. I'm down to 12% charge. I will leave you. A few days after his dramatic post, he was seen riding around in Ambergris Key in a golf cart accompanied by a 17-year-old girlfriend. Sometime later, journalist Joshua Davis woke up to a call from McAfee. It was 3 a.m. and McAfee sounded frantic and scared. Davis wrote that he spoke in a breathless, spooked tone and sounded genuinely unhinged. He told Davis that while walking on the beach at dusk, the GSU followed him on golf carts. I was walking down south on the beach and uh, suddenly I, I hear and see the GSU vehicle. McAfee says he ran towards a nearby hotel's porch and found shelter behind some bushes. I got on a porch but with, with some bushes around it uh, in, on one of the Captain Morgan's buildings. As soon as I did that, I heard someone clear their throat up above me. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Mm -hmm. Then one of, the, one of the other guys came running over didn't say a word. No one said a fucking word to me at all. 
Then he said he was holed up there all night as they silently converged around him while cloaked in the darkness. No one talked to me. No one said a word. You'd have no idea how scary it is to be surrounded by men with armed, with, you know, in, in, in their big uniforms with these big fucking guns. Um, and no one is saying a word. They just surround you and stand still. Think about it. <laughs> Freaky shit, sir. Freaky shit. He remains completely still in fear that if he moved even an inch, the GSU would surely kill him. And did you, no, I, I, what, I, were I you remain, talking I to them? I, no, I didn't, I didn't say a word. I didn't open my mouth. I didn't budge for the entire time. I was afraid that if I moved at all, someone would shoot me for... Were you standing, standing or were you sitting or... I was sitting down. I was sitting down. He says after hours of waiting, they finally retreated. GSU is the gang unit in Belize that was tracking his movements did quietly and disappeared. No one said anything to me. It was freaky. It was freaky. It was freaky. To me, it sounds like he's talking about shadow people. Quote, shadow people are often accompanied by other coinciding effects such as delirium, paranoia, anxiety, and feelings of impending doom. This tends to be a symptom of overusing stimulants such as your title should be 40 year old sexually deprived degenerate man viciously tries to act smart in front of thousands of brain dead children. Damn, bro. Yo, you fired that off, dude. That was a fucking good one, brother. Here's that attention that you wanted desperately, my friend. I, I read it too. Pretty good. Oh, he's... Oh, oh, this is another repressed, horny fucking weirdo who went from... Bro, stop pushing about pronouns. Just talk important stuff. Give me that sexy ass. Why is it that these people always start off being like incredibly horny? They come in here super horny. And then I guess when I don't give them the attention, they just get really mad. There you go, man. I gave you the attention. And now I will never even think about you for the rest of my life. Empty PV. He would talk if you died tomorrow, I would not even know. And my life would not even change remotely. Insignificant about his hitmen he would talk about how he could have people hurt or killed and um you know honestly i was i was scared although mcafee was initially interested in bankrolling the development of a topical antiseptic he decided to switch the company's focus towards manufacturing a drug that could stimulate the female libido alice it's mean i'm sorry dumbass trolls are incredibly insignificant in my life. Sorry. It's just the fucking truth. And Adonisio went along with this, but she quickly became uncomfortable being around McAfee. She told press that McAfee would try to coax her into joining his sex parties and would show her kinky pornographic websites. She said that he was incredibly open about his sexual exploits to the point that he'd bring prostitutes off of the street. And one day she quote, literally came upon a garbage bag full of Viagra. Eventually she had enough and started planning her escape. But before she could get away, McAfee did the unspeakable. The following clip is from the documentary Gringo. I only have sort of flashes of recollection. Trigger warning. Um, uh Sexual assault, uh, drugging, you know, all sorts of stuff. He was standing over me naked. And I woke up the next morning and I was sick. Once she told him that she wanted out, he lunged at her, causing her to seek cover behind a locked lab door. She then called a friend to escort her off of the property. The next day, she boarded a flight back home to Pennsylvania. Quote, Wait. As soon as I started questioning his motives, he turned on me and became a horrible, horrible person. Controlling, manipulative, and dangerous. I'm thankful that I got out with my life. McAfee's response was, Allison is an unhappy person who is unhappy to the core. Whatever's on the table, she'll turn it this way, that way, and make something out of it to be the cause of her unhappiness. Anyway, that's it for part two. Join me for part...